And now, Chrysler presents The Children's Room, starring Claire Luce. Hey, Skip, aren't you supposed to be in bed? Theoretically. Well, how about converting that theory to practice before your old lady comes down, hmm? Or just a few more pages. Pop, you still marking midterms? No, change the subject. I could help you. Could I, Pop? You got your master's degree? Shucks, it's only physics. Not even nuclear physics. It's a snap. Oh, Pop, you must be awful tired. To convert Fahrenheit to centigrade, subtract 32 and multiply by 9 fifths. Oh? You marked it true. To convert Fahrenheit? It should be 5 ninths, not 9 fifths. Well, where did you pick up that bit of information? I read it somewhere. And you remembered. <laughs> I remember everything I read. Oh, you promised to be in bed by 9 o'clock. What's so important about going to bed? Come on, Skip. Hit the sack. Oh, I'm supposed to be sick. All the more reason to get some shut eye. If you're in good shape, maybe you can go to school tomorrow. Check. Oh, oh I'm sick, all right. I'm awful sick. <laughs> oh, my book. Now, Walt, promise me you won't be in bed. You're ruining your eyes. Don't be silly. Walt, give me that book. No. All right, Walt. Now, I'm going to count to three, and then I want you to apologize to your mother. It's all her fault, Pop. One. Gee whiz, can I help it if she doesn't understand? Two. Okay. I apologize, Mother. Walt. Walt, I want you to come down here. Oh, never mind, Bill. Leave him alone. I don't know what's gotten into that Now, how can you expect you with your nose and your work 24 hours a day? Oh, now, Rose, that's not fair. Fair? What's happening to us? Is that fair? Well, I don't know what disturbed you so much about his actions. His actions? His behavior? It's much more than that, and you know it. I know that he's a perfectly normal boy. I know that he has an IQ of 240. And that makes him different from everybody else. You can't expect him to behave like every other boy. That's right. Turn your back. Bury your nose in your exam papers. That's always the easiest solution. All right, what do you want me to do? Scold the boy? Talk to him? Tell me what you want Just me to do. Just open your eyes. There's something wrong with our son. Just because he's disrespectful? Because in the last two months, he's grown into something I cannot understand. And it's not only me, it's his friends, his teachers. Half the time, he speaks a language that makes no sense. He uses words that the ordinary person can't even comprehend. And those horrible books with the strange markings. When I ask him what language it is and where he learned it, he laughs at me and says I'm stupid. And that only he can read it because he's different. Slow down, Rose. I don't know what you're talking about. Then find out. Look at those books. I think you should. I think you've avoided this long enough, Bill. I'd better be going. It's getting late. Well, say hello to your mother for me and tell her I'm sorry I can't come along. Yes, I'll make all the usual excuses. Will you be back early? Well, probably not before midnight. Darling, I've been so tied up this semester with those two extra courses. It's all right, Bill. I understand. From here on in, word of honor, I'm going to give more time to Walt. I really will. Bill, darling, do. I know I seem like such a nag, but really it's maddening. My son treating me like a child. Now drive slow. You can be very frightening behind that wheel. pretty interesting. Or is it just a stall to stay awake, huh? No, it's interesting, okay. Boy, it's darn interesting. Can you read it, Pop? Well, of course I can read it. Well, nobody else can. Not even Mom, but <laughs> she's different from us, isn't she, Pop? Where did you get this? In the children's room of the university library. The university? Well, I've been in the library a thousand times. You know perfectly well there's no children's room. But there is. I've been in it. Miss Edith gave me this book. Miss Edith? In the children's room. The white-haired lady. Okay. Hit the sack, Skip. You believe me, Pop. You do, don't you? Go to sleep, Walt. We'll talk about it again in the morning. We're different, Pop. We can read it, can't we? Just you and me. Oh, 
unlock our book. Now, really, just look at this book. What kind of a language do you call this? Are you trying to tell me that these foolish hieroglyphics are readable? Then you can't read this? I asked you a question. I don't like jokes that go well beyond their obvious point. I intend to return this book. Now, if you'll only be good enough to tell me where the children's room is. Mr. Davis, how many times do I have to tell you that there is no children's room? That seems to be a matter that you'll have to take up with our board of directors. Perhaps you can convince them to build one. Then there is no children's room. Oh, really, now? Well, won't you know perfectly well there's no children's room? But there is. I've been in it. Miss Edith gave me this book. Father's, I presume, Walter Davis, am I correct? Yes, I can see it around the eyes. You're Walter's father. My, this is unusual. I can understand your bewilderment. You've not read the book, have you? The one you're holding in your hand. Oh, the book, yes. I've read some of it. Why? Well, then you can read it. Well, of course I can read it. Why shouldn't I? No need to raise your voice. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't... When you finish the book, you will understand, as Walter even now is beginning to understand. I don't know what you're talking about. But it frightens you. Well, that's ridiculous. But true. You are frightened, aren't you, Mr. Davis? Frightened of something you felt before but refused to recognize, and you don't understand. But you will, Mr. Davis. We will make you understand. What must I understand? The difference, Mr. Davis, the difference in what in you. I've heard about enough of this. Stop acting like a child. Do you imagine you can run from it? You've read the book. Perhaps you failed to read far enough or refuse to accept the meaning in the words. You have reached the point of knowing, and now you shall know. You are a mutation, a superior human being, a deviation from the normal. You came into being because nature demanded a new race, because evolution must not stop at the creation of man, but must continually improve We must unite our mutants and their superior intelligence, for in a very short time, the human race will fall into competition with another race from another planet, a race which even now threatens to enslave us. You are not alone. There are thousands like you, and you will be the founders of a new superior civilization. Interesting hypothesis. A fact. And you're trying to tell me that I am a mutation? You are, Mr. Davis, otherwise you would not see our room here or be able to read our books. And you, these children, are mutations? And Walt? Especially Walt. You might just as well understand now, Mr. Davis. What must I understand? We will have to take your son. I think my wife will have something to say about that. We'll do her no good. You really think it's as simple as that? We will take your son, period, end of discussion? You will come to understand it. He's my son. He belongs to us. Well, then you'll have to fight me for him. (laughs) I hope not, Mr. Davis. But if need be, we will fight you. Our organization works for posterity and a better future. Walter can become a beneficial member of our society, and I warn you, Mr. Davis... You will not stand in our way. There is perhaps one solution. We did not know that you two were a mutant. Now, if it should turn out that your mutation is also a beneficial one, you can come with Walter. Uh, And my wife? Does she understand the book? You've answered the question for me, Mr. Davis. 
Good day. Pop up from. I've been looking everywhere for you, Bill. Bill? Tell me, what do you see there? The lettering over that door. Door? What are you talking about, darling? Up all night marking papers. You've caught Walt's virus. You're going straight home. I'll call the university. Oh, I'm not sick. You're going straight to bed. Now I've got two of you on my head. Yes. Walt and me. Two of us on your hands. And now, let's leave the world of the future for a moment and meet a lovely British actress who represents the world of today. Adrienne Corey appearing in the Kenneth McEldowney award-winning technical emotion picture, The River. Adrienne Corey. Hello. When I was in India for the filming of The River, I saw some priceless, fabulous jewelry. But when I came to America, I found the smartest piece of jewelry I'd ever seen. And any woman can own it. It's the Royal Leaf Pin, designed for me by Chrysler. Now, this is a genuine culture pearl. And see how it's set off against the golden brilliance of this leaf. Can you imagine a genuine cultured pearl? And it's not only beautiful, it's practical. Because this pin can be worn in so many different ways. For instance, to accent a hat. Or, of course, here. Or at the shoulder or sleeve of your dress. Or at your belt. And the most exciting piece of news is just how easily you can own this. Just listen. Yes, this royal leaf pin with its genuine cultured pearl should sell for $8.50. But it's yours for only $1 when you purchase a Chrysler watch band. Think of it. For a limited time only, you can get this stunning pearl pin for only $1. And you can choose a watch band like this one, for instance. Chrysler's Golden Fantasy, the expansion band that instantly transforms any woman's watch into a modern bracelet watch. So if you want to get this pin for only one dollar, see your jeweler and say, I want to get the Chrysler Royal Leaf Pin. And now, back to our story, The Children's Room, starring Claire Luce. What? Where's your father? Walt. Please, Mother, can't you see I'm trying to concentrate? Are you going out again? Yes, I'm afraid I must. Five nights now, ever since that day at the library. Well, darling, I can't help it if my work takes me away. Oh, stop it, Bill. Now you're treating me like a child. Mustn't ask questions. Naughty child. Well, well I've, I've had enough of this, Bill. I've worked at the lab before. I called the lab two nights ago, the night watchman answered. Oh, I'm sorry I made you do that. I'm sorry you feel you have to lie to me, Bill. What's happened to us? We were once a family. Rose, darling. Bill, I followed you last night. Why do you have to go to the library after it's closed? Is it some secret work? Is it something you can't tell me about? Please, Bill, just tell me that. That's all I ask. Darling, it's, it is a kind of secret work. Rose, please, trust me just a little while longer. Stay with me in this. You know I will. Drive carefully, darling. You know you can be pretty. I 
son, I understand what he says. Why, why, why? How can you listen to your father sit here for hours reading something I can't even understand? Why? Oh, mother, you're not one of us, are you? You're just plain poor mother. Not... What do you mean? Not one of us. A mutation. A superior human being. As Dad and I are. The result seemed to shock you. I didn't anticipate anything like this. You must admit I tried to prepare you during these five nights of testing. Your mutation is insignificant to the point where it benefits us not one whit. Well, then you have no need for me. No need, whatever. And Walt? He will soon reach the level where there will be no communication between the two of you. Even as now he barely speaks to his mother and then only as an infant. You have twisted his mind, you and your books. Accept the fact. Your son is a true mutation. Well, you can't take him away from us. You can't keep him. He will come to us, Mr. Davis. He'll come when he's ready. And no power on earth can stop that, save death. Well, he'll read no more of your books. I'll stop that right now. Make the attempt. I give you my blessing. You've been crying. Bill, darling, uh, those books. He said he had to read them. He said nothing could stop him. When I tried to stop him, when I tried to take the book away from him, Bill, he, my own son, he, he slapped me. Nothing can stop him, huh? That's the second time I've heard that tonight. Maybe I've waited too long. Maybe his head's too big now, but... Come, Rose. I think it's time we had a talk with our son. Take it easy, Skip. We saw the light from the foot of the stairs. You gonna hit me, Pop? Why should I hit you? Because she told you what I did. That's not she. That's your mother, and don't you ever forget it. Dad, I'm so mixed up. I, I want to stop reading. I swear I do. Some of it's scary. It says I'll have to go away, and I don't want to go away. Oh, my baby. My baby. You won't let me go, will you, Dad? You won't let me. You bet your life on it. I thought I'd have to go. It says so in the book. It says I'm a mutant, and I have work to do, and soon I'll have to go far, far away and join a colony. You won't be my father and mother no more. Darling, darling, this is all foolishness. You're just a baby. Rose, don't say that, please. I'm not a baby, Mother. The book says I'm a superior human being. Superior to you. The book says that... Enough of that talk. Now, where is that book? Well, I asked you a question. No, Bob, you mustn't. Yeah. Now, maybe we'll hear a little less talk about that book. It's only one, Pop. You can't tear them all. Skip. We're going away. They'll find me. It says so in the book. Wherever I go, they'll find me, because they need me for the future. If all mutants like me refuse to help, then our world would die. Maybe in a thousand years, but that has nothing to do with us, son. Maybe it does. No, no, believe me, Skip. 
Believe me, you're not that book. Have I ever told you anything that wasn't right? No, Bob. All right, then, son. Go to sleep. And bright and early tomorrow morning, we're going to hit the open road, just like old times, the three of us. We're going up to Maine. You always liked fishing, didn't you? Well, we're all going fishing, you and me and Mom. That sounds great, Pop. That sounds real great. Now, now go to sleep, John. Any more around like this? No, Pop. There's no more. Make a good bonfire. Uh, whatever it was, it's all right now, isn't it? Come on, darling. Make me a cup of that best coffee in the world. I think I owe you a lot of answers. <sighs> Fought you, but your course is clear. And though their limited understanding failed to grasp your mission in our future, they have failed to sway you from your destiny. You will come with us. Believe it, Bill. I've been in that library hundreds of times. Frightening. Frightening. Well, then we won't talk about it. But if they can do that, if, if they can put a room where only they can see it, they, they could do anything. Maybe. Maybe even if we do try to take water. Darling, what is it? I... I suddenly fell. Oh, darling, go up to it once, please. Sorry, but I can't help it. I tried not to read the book, but there was nothing I could do. I really hope I can see you again sometime, but I really don't think I will. We will be going far, far away, and they have a lot of work for me to do. I was very happy to be your son, and I loved you very, very much. I'm sorry I slapped Mom. I guess I couldn't help that, too. Your loving son, Walt. And so closes our tale of tomorrow. But now, one last word from lovely motion picture star, Adrienne Corey. Just a reminder, from one woman to another. 
you can get the Chrysler Royal Leaf Pin with its real culture pearl for only one dollar when you buy a Chrysler watch band for yourself or for your husband. And to you men, I say, here's a chance to get a beautiful gift for your wife for only one dollar and get a new watch band for yourself or her at the same time. So why not see the Chrysler Royal Leaf Pin at your jeweler tomorrow? Next week, Tales of Tomorrow brings you Nina Foch in Bound Together. The story of what happened to the wife of a rocket pilot when his ship was reported lost in space. Tales of Tomorrow will be brought to you next week by C.H. Maslin and Sons, makers of Maslin Beauty Blend Broadlooms and Maslin Hunting and Fishing Clothes. For really beautiful broadloom, be sure to see Maslin's Quadrille, sculptured, textured, and loom to give you years of extra wear. Priced at about $12.95 a square yard, it comes in gray, green, and beige. Quadrille Broadloom by Masland. Miss Luce's Gowns by Hannah Troy. Preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.